Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on the program today. We've been talking on Health Professional Radio about a rare disease called XLH. And today our guest is a very special guest. She's a patient living with XLH. Her name is uh, Rachel Jones. And she's joining us here to talk about her diagnosis and um, how this condition has affected her life and the lives of her family. And um, also talk about the recent FDA approval of Christmas. Chris Vita, thank you so much for joining us today, Rachel. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Uh, besides being diagnosed at birth with uh, XLH, give us a bit of background about yourself. What are you doing? Where do you do it? Uh, well, I'm actually in a textbook writer and editor, mm-hmm. and also an administrator. I was in education for many years, so um, that's all little background on me. I live in Colorado with my family. XLH. It's it's a mouthful to say. That's why we you know call it XLH. <laughs> X-linked hypophosphatemia, a very Correct. rare skeletal disorder, and uh, it is genetic. I do believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you were diagnosed at birth. I know. I know people are affected, diagnosed as children, and then they manage it throughout their adult life. But you were diagnosed at birth. How did that come about? Well, um, my mother was actually the first one in her family to be diagnosed, um, and she was not diagnosed early um, because very little was known about it at the time um, in the 50s when she was born. And so um, because they knew it was hereditary and knew she had it, they knew that she had the um, percent chance of passing it on to her children. Um, so she passed it on to my brother, and then uh, I was I was born second, and so they and I knew there was a pretty good chance that I would have it as well. So they were able to diagnose me um, fairly quickly with blood um, tests. How did that affect your management of the disease later on in life, being diagnosed so early as opposed to how it affected your mom? (laughs) Um, I believe that it really helped um, to have an understanding right away of um, exactly what was going on um, and to be able to to get me on treatment and my brother on treatment as well sooner than later. I know um, that that definitely helped a lot in terms of um, just being able to follow me medically and, and to be able to give me better treatment um, than what my mom had available to her at the time. You know, sometimes there can be a stigma attached dealing with a, a disease, especially a rare disease. People don't understand. Maybe you don't understand yourself. Was there anything that you and your brother had to face as children? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, my brother and I had a very different um in terms of the symptoms that we had as a result of XLH. So my brother had several surgeries. So that really, from the time he was a year old all the way through high school, he had to deal with multiple surgeries. Um, For me, I didn't have as, um, when I was younger, I didn't have as severe um, of symptoms. And so I I didn't start having surgeries until I was in high school. But um, I did, you know, because it does cause shorter stature. Of course, everyone... Um, knew there was something that was different about me. And I know as a a child um, growing up, um, probably all the way into my young adulthood, I really tried to never talk about it. Um, I never wanted anyone to know that there was something different about me. I fought really hard to to have a normal life and to not... um, stand out, even though I knew I did physically stand out. Um, But it was when I had um, my children and they were both diagnosed. That's when I said, okay, I can't pretend that I don't have a condition. I need to learn as much as possible so that I can be an advocate for them and to also just be an example to them of how to live Mm -hmm. um, in be different and to to embrace that and to, um, you know, just live life to the fullest, even in the midst of having to deal with a, a rare condition. What about support for such a rare disease as XLH? We are bringing awareness here on the program. We spoke with a physician yesterday, as a matter of fact, about uh, XLH and Chris Vita. What are your thoughts on the support that's out there or the support that is becoming more available to folks like yourself? 
I'm uh, very excited about the future and um, in terms of the support that is now available. I know when gro- when I was growing up, there was very little known. Um, and so I often, um, my mom had to educate doctors on my condition and um, get as much information to them, but it wasn't readily accessible like it is now. Um, when I found out that my children were diagnosed, I was able to actually find a lot of information online. Um, and especially with the XLH network incorporated, I was able to find other people who um, had XLH because I was told that it was so rare. There were very few people out there and, and I found out that there were more than I thought. And so um, that has been a great resource. And then yeah, just following the news and and the FDA approval of Crescita, we're very excited for um, the possibility of getting my children on that and my myself just to see um, how that completely changes um, our our outlook on on just the future of of having this condition. Now, Chris Vita, I understand, is administered uh, subcutaneously as as opposed to orally. Yes, um, for my children, um, for adults, uh, it's really it's controversial as to whether or not the traditional um, medication is actually helpful, okay. and so I took it um, when I was pregnant and um, and you know during those years, but um, I haven't been on anything at this point just because there's just not clear direction. But my children, yes, from the time they were diagnosed, um, which has helped. Um, and so they have to do that several times a day. Um, but so that, so this will be a completely different, um, change for them. So in wrapping up, what are three key takeaways that you'd like my audience to take with them? Um, I would say for anyone living with a rare disorder, it's important to be uh, your own advocate to, um, find out as much information as you can, um, because, um, it's important to be able to go into a doctor's office and to say, okay, here's what I know. Let's come up with a plan together. Um, and also to, to know that, um, there, there is support out there, especially, you know, my personal situation is, is XLH and I've been able to find great support through the XLH network and, and that, um, is great because you don't have to walk um, through it alone. And, and, um, the third thing would just be to to embrace it, probably um, as hard as whatever diagnosis someone may have, um, to embrace it, to find out information, be your own advocate and just, you know, see how it can make you stronger in life. Because um, I do feel like my diagnosis has made me stronger and has made me be able to handle different trials in life probably better than I would have if I hadn't you know, have this um, going on in my life. Well, it has certainly been a pleasure. I appreciate you coming in and talking with us today, Rachel. Thank you. Great. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm and at healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, listen in and download at SoundCloud and visit our affiliates page at hpr.fm.